We're going to talk about OpenAI's new text-to-video model, Sora, how the Valley's been reacting to it. Um, we're going to dive into the research about it, but put it in common tongue so plebes like myself could understand. Then we're going to talk about all the events and what's going on to Google stock price and how OpenAI again has stolen their thunder. So this is the uh, Sick Podcast talk about business and AI with a pinch of humor. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. This show is hosted by two veteran Googlers. My co-host, Joe Trinaski, has now officially bought every island in Hawaii. His monopoly is now complete. Um, he's a VP of engineering. I am a mergers and acquisitions professional. And so let's get into it. So before we get into the research, I thought, hey, let's just go through um, chat GPT's explora- uh, explanation of uh, OpenAI's research and how Sora works. So. ChatGPT says, imagine you're exploring the newest frontier in digital creativity, the ability to conjure up videos from thin air. Just by describing what you want to see, this isn't science fiction, it is what the Sora project is all about. Developed by pushing the boundaries of artificial intelligence, Sora trains on a vast array of videos and images, learning to understand and generate new content that ranges from short clips to minute-long high-definition videos. At the heart of Sora's magic, it's a concept borrowed from how large language models, like the one you're chatting with now, that's so awesome, I I love this, Uh, uh, learn from textual data. Instead of words, Sora deals with patches of video or image data. These patches help the AI understand and generate visuals across a wide variety of durations, resolutions, and aspect ratios. Essentially, Sora can create new videos or images by understanding the basic building blocks of visuals it's being trained on. Sora's ability to generate content is powered by a sophisticated type of AI known as the Fusion Model, which learns to create by starting with a random noise and gradually shaping it into the desired output, guided by the vast amount of video and image data it's learned from. This approach allows Sora to produce high, highly detailed and varied video content, from widescreen movies to vertical videos perfect for social media, all while maintaining the quality and the coherence of visual storytelling. Moreover, Sora isn't just about creating standalone videos, it can extend existing videos, animate static images, and even simulate interactions with the digital environment, like a video game. That is gonna be bad. We're gonna have a video gaming, a video game, a gaming renaissance is gonna happen soon, and I just can't wait. I mean, the first part of the renaissance was the emergence of all these indie gaming studios who went direct to fans to fundraise for niche ideas that couldn't be turned into AAA blockbusters, but there was a need for in the gaming community. And then now, if you're going to provide models like these that are going to allow game designers to focus more on, like, maybe some game designers are really good at creating stories, and they're really good at, like, polishing and, like, patching features and things like that, but they're not really good at, like, doing visuals and design, models like this could help fill the gap. Um, This versatility opens up a world of possibilities for content creation, making it easier than ever to bring imaginative scenarios to life without needing a Hollywood budget. One of the most exciting aspects of Sora is the ability to understand and respond to natural language descriptions. This means you can describe a scene or story, and Sora can create a video that matches your description. Whether it's a serene walk through a digital representation of Antarctica, or a dynamic scene featuring a colorful festival, Sora can bring your words to life in video form. Despite its groundbreaking capabilities, Sora is still evolving. It faces challenges, like accurately simulating complex physical interactions or ensuring long-term coherence in extended videos. However, the ongoing development of Sora and similar technologies hints at a future where AI can serve as a general-purpose simulator for the physical and digital worlds, offering new ways to visualize, understand, and interact with information and entertainment. In summary, Sora represents a significant leap forward in video generation technology, offering a glimpse into the future where created detailed dynamic visual content can be as simple as describing what you want to see it's a tool that blurs lines between imagination and reality making the digital world more malleable and accessible to creative minds everywhere gpt4 we love you thank you okay that's a great explanation so now we can go through the research report i'm not gonna read line by line um but here's where it's talking about taking the images and then turning them into patches um, uh, where LLMs have text tokens, Sora has visual patches. Patches have previously been shown to be effective representations for models of visual data. Um, then we go into a diffusion model where basically it starts with noise and then eventually over time it gets clearer and you get your, your image in a kind of what it does is it allows the model to kind of like predict, okay, there's noise here. This is probably maybe a 1950s boom town and eventually get to this clear, this clear photo or whatnot. Um, 
again, I am not an AI uh, researcher. So they say here, in this work, we find that the fusion transformers scale effectively as video models as well. Below, we show a comparison of video samples um, with fixed seeds and inputs as uh, training progresses, sample quality improves uh, marketedly as training compute increases. So sample quality improves marketedly as training compute increases. Now, here's a really an interesting question. I mean, right now, this is like proof of concept that this works. And this is glorious. Uh, question is like, how much does this cost to, to run this? And that's where geniuses like Greg Brockman are like, oh boy, we probably could make this more efficient here and here and do this and that. But it would be interesting to see how much does it cost to... Uh, how much does it cost and compute to produce this thing on the left, which is a dog. It's a cerebrous, cute cerebrous puppy. You can't even tell it really is a dog to then this one. It's okay. This is a dog. But it's kind of like, it's weird. And uh, the woman in the background it doesn't look right to then this hyper photorealistic, adorable. I think it's a Shiba in you with the most cute little, little, little hat. It's like a, made out of yarn and everything. And then you can see the woman now, her hand, she has like a wedding ring on, or uh, that might be her engagement ring. Women of Svik can correct me on that because I'm an idiot male. Um, reminds me, there's a good story about how synthetic diamonds now are slowly creeping up, eating into the market share of like natural diamonds. Um, anyways, okay. So here's another example on the left. Here's a turtle. Actually, what's the safest one? Sora can sample widescreen 1920 by 1080p videos vertical uh, 1080 920 videos and everything in between this lets Sora create content for different devices directly at their native aspect ratio it also lets us quickly prototype content at lower size oh thank you Jesus ha we've all done it you you see a cool event and you're recording this way dun 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 no you should be recording this way eventually in, in Google times everything takes forever they're going to just integrate it that if you're recording this way, then they're just going to model like feather out what else could possibly be happening. And of course, little disclaimer, Google added this extra content here. It might necessarily be the truth, but it makes everything look better. So now people don't complain. Hey, you filmed your video the wrong way. Me. Um, but look at that turtle. That's super. This is okay. If anyone showed me this, I'd be like, this is real. Like I could, you, you're hard pressed to tell. Um, this is great. I'm at Pixar right now. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> How do we get our hands on this stuff? This is going to make our animators' lives so much easier. And then they could just, they could do so many more proof of concepts on films, or they could just make, they could make different versions of the film and go to different sample audiences and see how people like, like A, B test movies. How great would that be? Because then they would freaking A, B test Last Jedi and be like, yeah, you know, like, uh, having Luke like become like a deranged creeper and like drinking from the breast of like an alien for milk. And then, you know, um, he has a force ghost over, but you don't tell him it's a force ghost. And then at the end, uh, Kylo Ren discovers it's actually it's a force ghost. And then Luke's like, well, I'll see you again, kid. And so everyone thinks, Oh, Luke's not really dead, but then Luke dies. Yeah. That wasn't a really good idea. No one liked that. Maybe we should have actually, you know, had Luke appear and then die in person. So we get some finality. He can go off like a G. No, We'll do a force ghost. Anyways, you could A, B, C, test, D, test that, and people would see the A version, Ryan Johnson version I laid out, and be like, what, are you smoking crack? And then eventually they would find a better version, and now they can redo it without actually paying a king's ransom to reshoot stuff. So this is going to be a great time for entertainment and gaming. Um, okay, improved framing and composition. We empirically find that training on videos at their native aspect ratio improves composition and framing. We compare Sora, uh, Sora against a version of our model that crops all training videos to be square, which is common practice when training generative models. The model trained on square crops left sometimes generates videos where the subject is only partially in view. In comparison, videos from Sora right uh, have improved framing. Okay, so partially in view... Okay, even if that's impartially viewed, it's beautiful. Look at the, wa look at the water. Like, how <laughs> that's real. Dog. There's, there's no way that's not real. Like, you see, that's, like, that's real. Uh, look at this one. Now it's like centered and whatnot. You got, even, you've got kelp right there. Hell yeah. That's dope. Okay. Um, okay, here's a, a toy robot wearing blue jeans and a white t shirt taking a pleasant stroll in Johannesburg, South Af Africa during winter storm. Okay, now it's winter storm. Okay, this is fake because there's electricity. Everyone knows now in South Africa, they have like brownouts all the time. So fake news on this. But if this was like a San Jose, I'm like, oh my God, this is San Jose. What's going on here? Uh, this is pretty cool. I just like how the camera's going around the robot 
and it's so smooth. And you know that you have that little car right there. I guess this this looks real. This is real. Um, oh no! Everyone's like Doomer's like, oh, what is real then? <gasps> dun, 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 dun. It's like no, no, no. It's not going to end the turn of the apocalypse. Um, animating dolly images. Sora is capable of generating videos, provide an image and prompt an input. Below, we show an example of videos generated based on Dolly 2. Okay, so here's the image, and now it's just creating the animation. Now, think about this, though. What if you're st storyboarding an idea, and you have your stick figures, you're like, okay, this is the battle scene here where the army's charging, and the army's going um, into... Maybe they're they're doing a wedge formation, which we don't know if it's historically accurate. Because people say it is. They did wedges. Some people said no, they didn't, because the first person on the wedge is going to their death. But if you have someone at the top of the triangle and they're leading, that allows them to steer the direction of the wedge much easier, because everyone can see the person in the front of the guides. But anyways, let's say it's a wedge formation. You could stick figure that out maybe, and then give it this model, and then it could like animate what that would look like. And now people can say, oh yeah, that would be a really cool scene to shoot. Um, so that's really cool. Um, monster illustration in flat design style and diverse monsters. The group includes a fury brown. I'll oh, see. Look, here's my, there's the idea. Here's drawn. And now it's alive and it's doing things. This is <laughs> when South Park first came out, they were doing everything by hand and they're using construction paper. They would have like murdered to have this technology 20 some odd years ago. Um, an image of a realistic cloud that spins sore. Oh, those, those beautiful geniuses did it. They got it to actually include text. golf clap oh man there's so many hacks right now in the mid journey community about like okay this is how you make a youtube thumbnail and then what you do here is that you get your photoshop and you put a box in there and you write what you want to have like this hopefully this will kill all that shit you just tell it what you want inside uh look at this that's dope. oh god you know okay this reminds me right here um i was in madrid uh police people from spain correct me there's their national museum, which has all the amazing pictures. If we're talking like, like um, stuff going like medieval, going to medieval, the Enlightenment, just just like the most beautiful artwork you've ever seen in your life. And there's some paintings in there that I would wish that you could just take a picture of and then give it to this model and be like, okay, bring this to life. And that would be so incredibly dope. Or go to the Sistine Chapel, take a picture, Sora, bring it to life. Ah, oh, God, can't wait. Future is so bright. Like as a quote says, it's so bright, I need to put on some sunglasses. Okay. Uh, extending generating videos. Sora is also capable of extending videos, either forward or backwards in time. Below are four videos that we are uh, that were all extended backwards in time, starting from the segment of a generated video. As a result, each of the four videos starts different from others, yet all four videos lead to the same ending. Oh, Comcast. Don't fail me. God, I, I, should I get AT&T Fiber? Let me know in chat if I should get AT&T Fiber. This is really cool. Uh, it's very tiny. It's for ants. It's like a, is this a trolley? Let me zoom in for y'all real quick. No, what did I do? Um, what the hell did I do? Where was I? I'm sorry. Hold on. There, there, there we are. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's a trolley. Okay. It's all going backwards in time. <laughs> I mean, I just imagine all the people who have B. I mean, I think to a degree, eventually B roll filming is going to go away. But just imagine the B roll you've had that you wanted to use editing something. And you're like, oh shit! Like I wish this B roll wasn't like started a little bit uh, sooner. And now you can like fix that with this. Uh, we can also use a method to extend the video both forward and backwards, to produce seamless infinite loop. Hell yeah! I mean, I I now have to tell myself, like, so I already know, if you would have just gave me, like, videos of so something Sora created and then real-life videos and then tell me, like, which one do you think is fake, like, I now have to, like, really, really try hard and be like, okay, like, let me look at the shadow. No, the shadow's there. Okay, well, look at the tires. Is it kicking up any dust? Uh, but maybe it's the fact that it might, might, might have been early in the morning and there's dew there, so there's not much dust being kicked up. Like, it's gotten to the point you really can't tell the difference. This is beautiful. Um, video to video editing. Diffusion models have enabled a plethora of methods for editing images and videos from text prompts. Below, we apply one of these methods, the SD edit to Sora. This technique enables Sora to transform the styles and environments of input video, uh, videos, zero shot. So here's the input video. Change the setting to be a less jungle. Hell yeah. Okay, see so the, the video on the left, it's like you're driving somewhere in Northern California 
maybe in the, in midsummer because there's like dead there's there's brush there's dead there's dead grass and when they're right is like now you're in lush jungle and you can totally see all like the um the trees they have, they have thicker canopy um there's there's your waterfall Here's another one. Change the setting in 1920s old school car. Make it make sure to keep the red, red color. Oh, dude, this is like a uh, Sam Alti. Correct me in chat because he sees some 1930s cars there on the right side. But it, look at this. This is dope. This would be a great video game too. It's a Grand Theft Auto 1920s. Um, yeah. Now it's underwater. It's underwater car. This is really cool. You can see the coral reefs and everything. Hell yeah. Uh, connecting videos. We can always use Sora to gradually in, in, interpolate, I hate that word, between two input, input videos, creating seamless transitions between videos that entirely different subjects and scenes compositions. In the example below, the video in the center interpolates between the corresponding videos in the left and right. Um, okay. So there's... Okay, the middle, left one's a drone. Oh, middle one's a drone that turns into... One on the right is a butterfly underwater. So left one's a drone flying. Okay, so y let's do this again. You start with the drone, and the drone looks like it's going through a Colosseum or some type of ancient Roman ruins, and it's flying through. This is a really cool video, and now it's turning into a butterfly. And the Colosseum is turning into a coral reef. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you geniuses you've done it <laughs> okay here's another cool one uh left is like you're probably somewhere in, in italy um and you're in a villa and the right is a really cool like little gingerbread christmas town with snowman in the middle and now the middle one is you're overlooking the villa and then in the middle of it as the camera pans down it turns into christmas town ah uh, this is dope Okay, one on the left is like a gecko or something, and the one on the right is that super classy pigeon, that blue one they show. Oh my god, I need to get one of those. If I had like Pablo Escobar money, I'd have like a, I'd have those birds, but they're probably like super temperamental or something, and they'd probably fire me or kill me. Okay, now in the middle, this one is, it's mixing. Okay, now it starts with the gecko, and the gecko's got a little bit of the of the bird's fur, and it's now developing the beak. And now it's turning into the bird pretty much. The eyes are becoming like the bird. Oh, God. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> okay, left one's the Jeep. The right one is like a... Uh, is that a mountain lion? Or is that a... Cougar? Not Puma. Uh, someone... Zoologist, correct me, please. Okay, this one starts with the Jeep. Then that turns... Does it turn into the, the, the Jeep? Okay. Oh. The Jeep uh, leaves behind the Puma slash Cougar thing. That's kind of cool. Okay, now this is a cool one. Left side is a uh, nineteen is a is a California gold rush town, and the right one is like New York underwater wildlife. And the middle now is it going from boom town, nineteen fifties gold rush boom town, with the animals all around, and it's slowly. Water's overtaking it, and it's also industrializing and becoming downtown New York. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, image generation capabilities. Sora is capable of generating images. We do this by arranging patches of Gaussian noise in a spatial grid with temporal extent of one frame. The model can generate images of variable sizes up to 2048, 2048 resolution. That, the one on the left right here? Like, this is... I think the only thing that would give it away was just maybe I've never seen anyone with um, awesome freckles like on their nose like that. Usually the freckles were over here, but actually, you know what? Take that back. Maybe it's just the hue of the freckles, but or maybe I haven't seen enough people with freckles because I'm, I'm not a cultured person. Okay, Jesus, it can still go on more. Uh, 3D consistency. Sora can generate videos with dynamic camera motion as a camera shifts and rotates. People in the scene element move consistently through three-dimensional space. Here's a, a couple going through, like looks like Tokyo uh, in the winter. Cherry blossoms are going through a small little market. Look on the left-hand side. You can actually see inside the market and see it's selling jewelry. And this one's selling this type of food and jams and cakes. And then the scene shows 
a river with two bridges and you're seeing a whole entire skyline of Tokyo. There's your one on the right. This is like Yosemite Falls. Um, absolutely stunning. And it's two people are uh, hiking. Like they're holding hands too. And their path is kind of going away, but we'll give them that. That's fine. But then there's falls there. Like, hell yeah. Um, large coherence and object permanence. A significant challenge for video generation systems has been maintaining temporal consistency with sampling long videos. We find that Sora is often, though not always, uh, able to effectively model both short and long range dependencies. For examples, our models could persist people, uh, people, animals, objects, even when they are occluded or leap frame. Likewise, it can generate multiple shots of the same character in a single sample, maintaining the appearance throughout the video. So left one, you have a cute little dog, Dalmatian. On the right, you have a uh, robot, uh, does not have a cute face. Big mistake. You got to put a cute face in your robot, and then people will treat it differently. They actually should do a study on that. If they put, like, make the robots cuter versus robots that are not cute and how humans interact with it. Um, there was a research paper Joe showed me like four or five years ago where they had these uh, robots released in Japan, and they specifically put them near kids to see if kids would terrorize them. And then the, the robots would learn, like, if they get surrounded by so many kids that they need to move in certain directions and not get terrorized, or that they need it closer to humans, uh, parents, and the, and the kids will be on their best behavior. It was pretty cool. We'll dig it up later. Um, there's a guy eating a sandwich. This one is uh, simulating digital worlds. Sorak is able to simulate artificial processes. One example is video games. Uh, Sora can simultaneously control the player in Minecraft with a basic policy while also rendering the world and its dynamics in high fidelity. These capabilities can can be uh, elicited zero shot by prompting Sora with captions mentioning Minecraft. There's two examples of Minecraft game. This is really cool. It's just generating as it goes. Um, this is, yeah, it's going to be a video game revolution. Uh, discussion. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, all right. Now, let's to put this in perspective, here's where we were about a year ago. Someone was telling me the one on the left this is Will Smith eating spaghetti. At least they had the eating fries looking really weird. And here's one on the right. Uh, it's uh, Sora, like looking freaking awesome. Um, and Siki Chen said, I never understood how many, how so many people can look at AI and simply scoff at all the flaws they see today. Do they not understand that technology improves? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Enough, Will Smith. Okay, that noise is disgusting. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, people have this weird blindness to the path of progress. Um, some people might not get it. Um, some people, it could be willful blindness. Other people just don't see it. Um, large corporations have this. When you're trying to pro propose a new plan or project or policy and you tell them like it's got something that's going to iterate and improve over time, like most late stage corporations don't have the type of people who want things that evolve over time. They don't understand that you need to launch something and have it interact with either your company or society so that you can get feedback to improve it. They don't like that. So instead they look at things as like, you need to launch perfect every time. And that's just not possible. And that's why then uh, learning in the organization slows down, iteration slows down and the company eventually becomes decrepit and becomes a great place for layoffs to happen or an acquisition by a private equity company that does more layoffs or actually the company goes under. Uh, it's a never ending story and you see it happen to tech companies all the time, but at a faster clip. Um, because these, uh, the foundations of tech companies are built on software or hardware that is constantly changing. Like as soon as you ship something, it's already out of date. So they get destroyed by this cycle equally as fast. Whereas companies like Procter & Gamble that are selling uh, essentials at Safeway, it's like, we're not really, there's always going to be a need for like toilet paper and and needs for certain types of foods and sweets and shit. It's, it would take like some type of genetic revolution where it's like, no, we no longer need those things and those companies go out of business. So they can be really slow and not get punished as much. Whereas tech companies, if you're slow, you're basically dead. Um, so also I think people too, uh, when they see uh, this type of technology, like Sora, and they're in an industry that says tracks, some people put their heads in the sand and deny it and they attack it. 
and they try to get legislation against it or they downplay it because they're afraid that's going to hurt their jobs. Um, I used to heavily use Fiverr and Upwork, and then ChatGPT came in, and I didn't need, need to use as much. And then Dolly 2 and Mid Journey basically took away my took God took away my need to ever need to um get stock stock art made. And so that basically a lot of people lost their jobs because of that. Um and it's it's really rough. Um so there are people who are gonna be directly hurt by this. But then there are people who are going to use it and they're gonna actually improve what they're doing and they're gonna create much more high quality work. Or there are people who were creating stock art, but now can use Sora or different mid journey to create much higher quality work and they're going to step up their game. Um, but the people who say, no, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to stay old school and I'm not going to change. Those are the ones who are the most um, at risk of being hurt unless they already have a fantastic reputation of producing fantastic artwork that they, people are willing to pay for like Banksy, things like that. But if you're low tier, uh, mid medium tier or mid tier, and you don't have a following, you don't have a brand, you don't have distribution or anything. It's gonna be pretty tough for you if you're not adopting this some some way. Oh, so, that's hot. Okay, Jesus. All right. Um, we're gonna go this one here. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, here is uh oh. Also, do me a favor. If y'all could pause real quick and head over to Twitter and just go to SCIC Podcast and follow me. Um, and also if you want to follow JW Thib, but Swick Podcast too, both, just follow both. Why? Because both a lot of good shit on there, stuff on there. But also I use this account to reach out to other people who are in AI in the space and get them to come on the show. So by just you, uh, just following me, it adds credibility. But then also if you see me tweeting or something, please like and reshare. It just gets the word out and it helps us grow the channel and it allows me to then provide you with access to even better guests and, and covering better topics so here is all these little animals um <laughs> they're on bicycles and they are like going over the going over the ocean like this is just going to be fantastic for just animation going forward okay so let's go back to reality um last five days have not been good for google um and so in the stock price you're seeing it this is five days like this is just because at small microcosm and i'm going to expand it out we'll talk more but you look at right now at five days ago it was about 150 a share and now it's down 142 a share it's not life-changing or something but why why is this happening and so if you look over here 2013 or sorry february 13th which was what three days ago so that was god calendar just goes by and if i could get a calendar up um what was that three days ago so that was like tuesday or wednesday i can't do math anyways uh the waymo recall was announced for basically they called the cars in because two waymo cars collided with the same truck <laughs> which is pretty funny um and then information has a story um that google is entering openai's market if you want to learn more about that story head over to here openai versus google search microsoft copot mixed reviews i just released it if you head over to 1920 um, I break down the whole entire story for you. Um, so then at 7.07 a.m., Twitter uh, announcement from Google, Gemini 1.5 gets announced. Yay! But then, <laughs> same day, three hours later, uh, Uncle Sam's back. Here's Sora. What do you think about that? And just look, Rick, I mean, the views on Google's account, 400,000 views compared to sam's 5.1 million <laughs> views <laughs> yes and so you, you look you look over here and this is like the end of trading day and this is the beginning of the next morning the stock took it took a little bit of a dip it took it went down what three point uh five points uh it could be the fact that you know open ai just stole uh google's thunder it could be that Gemini 1.5, which was sounded cool, was like, eh, like bit larger, larger context window. But how much is that going to cost us? I mean, what was cool for us nerds is it did the needle in the haystack test, and it showed that it can um, perceive much more in its context window than previous models could. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, I did a video. Um, let's see here, it's called Gemini 1.5. 
Gemini 1.5 and this 1 million token context window. So going back over here, we had a drop. Now, if you go back six months, I mean, the stock is still above where it was in November. You go back one year, still still positive. Go back five years. I mean, you're in good shape. I and mean, you've got max. It's like ridiculous. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, if you're starting at Google around 21, 2021 or so, you get your stock vest here around this area. Um, by the time you hit your one-year cliff, or eh, they might, what they might do is they probably will vest you within your first um, few months. You might start getting some equity like pretty soon. Some or some companies, it really depends. Some might say in the first couple of months we might give you some partial vested equity. Others might do a one-year cliff, which is traditional, and say, okay, you start November 12, twenty twenty-one. Not until November of twenty twenty-two, you get your first vest. So now you, now you get twenty-five percent of your equity. And it was originally granted to you at uh, 149, which basically means uh, when you first join, they look at, okay, they said in your comp package, they're going to give you $100,000 for the Google equity. Um, at your grant date, let's say it's number 12, they look at the current value of Google shares, $149.65. Um, they get your 100000 they divide by that stock price, and that's how many shares you're going to get over four years or something. They recently changed it. They said, like, we give 33% in the first year or some other bullshit, but just keep it easy. So you go back over here, and now, you know, you were granted 149, and now this is under Now this is kind of underwater. I mean, you have the shares. You can cash them in, but it's kind of weird because you kind of feel like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should or something. So you have this weird situation where you have people for a couple of years that are, like, underwater. I mean, they could cash out, but then eventually it got back to even. But still, you're not getting any appreciation on those shares. Whereas um, when when I, me and my other friends used to work at Google like way back, like we were getting our shares. And I, yeah, I wish I had like held all the way here. I mean, be balling. But we were consistently getting appreciation, which is a nice story to have. Whereas these people who joined recently are not getting that. And so it's really, it's really a tough situation for people to be in as a company. I know. Uh, first world country problems, but still, like that's real money. And in the valley, uh, you really need your equity to appreciate in order for you to actually, you know, if you want to, like I don't know, have a home and have kids and have a family, because because everyone else is getting paid in equity. If their equity's appreciating or making money, they're going to basically buy up all the housing, and you're not going to be able to buy anything nice. So, interesting situation. Um, let's go to next. I want to start going to reactions from people. Oh, not reactions. Here's um, another video of people asking, hey, can you have this thing uh, make some nochi? This looks really weird. Um, it's too complex. But still, I mean, the background looks great. Grandma looks kind of creepy how she's doing her hands. Um, but it still takes time to get to where we want. Let's go to the next one. Um, let's see here. One. Here's one. Uh, futuristic drone race at sunset in the planet Mars. That looks really, really cool. I like that. It looks beautiful. Here's another one. Uh, a half duck, half dragon flies through a, be a beautiful sunset with a hamster dress and adventure gear on its back. It's like kind of like flying backwards. That looks neat. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, support the show. Go to patreon.com forward slash sick. Uh, you can get exclusive episodes. These, these episodes have no ads or anything on them. Um, so far, we have 12 episodes out. We try to put out three three a week. Um, for five bucks, it gets you access. Sports the show keeps us going. Um, I quit my job and went full-time into this. So every dollar that we can get counts to keep the show going and going forward. And also, we use those dollars to reinvest into the show and make it even better. Now, we have different tiers. Five bucks a month gets you access to our Patreon videos on here. Um, access to our reading list which we continue to add more and more and more papers to. Um, you can actually take a quick look at it over here. Let me show you to it. We got Joe is adding research papers to this thing like regularly. Um, just tons of research papers. Plus we have summaries of the research papers. So you have the best research that me and Joe are reading, but then we summarize it. So you necessarily don't have to go into the research, but if you really want to like go deep, you can. So there's a lot of great stuff in there. You get access to that for five bucks a month, plus um, our exclusive videos. And then uh, 10 bucks a month, 
you get the ability to ask uh, questions of our, our, our show guests. Um, we are having Anthony Repetto come through. He's a mathematician, self-taught. 2017, he was one who said, hey, mixture of experts for large language models is going to lead to some of the most powerful AI models we've ever, ever had. And he was like one of the first people to actually call that out back in 2017. And lo and behold, GPT-4 is using a mixture of experts, and it is like crushing. Um, then we're having Matthew Young. He's a colleague of mine from Google. He left Google to start an AI company, which basically uh, provides teachers with uh, AI analytics support um, by using large language models. So they can go to just a chat prompt, be like, hey, which my who are the best performers? Which students are performing well? How are my students trending compared to last year's class? Um, do you see any areas of need for improvement? And this thing is a data analyst that will look through all the teachers' academic information on their students and give them usable insights that they, they can then translate into action plans to make their students more effective. Um, and then we are having Zach Koalas come through. Uh, he's a venture capitalist. He's gonna talk about the state of VC. And then what's going on in San Francisco? He's trying to fight the good fight and help out things there and help San Francisco turn around. And then I am chasing the founders of uh, Multion, who do have an action, uh, who have an AI model that works in your Chrome browser and basically can take action for you on your behalf and make your work much easier to get done. So, anyways, a lot of great stuff. Support us over here at SIC. Go to uh, patreon.com forward slash SVIC. Let's go back to the show. Um, Here's another video of a street level tour through a futuristic city, which is in harmony with nature and, all, and also simultaneously cyberpunk. That looks pretty darn cool. Okay. Let's, and then we have this one. Um, an agile Indian police officer in denim jeans and a black polo shirt steps out dr of a drifting car wearing aviators, fires the tires of another car, causing it to flip over. Swiftly, he pulls out the driver just as the car flips over. <laughs> Amazing. Look at that. The cinematography. So <laughs> okay, so that <laughs> that's everyone knows that's not that's not Sora, but uh that is one of my favorite Indian movie clips of like all of all time. And uh I think the only thing that's missing from that clip if they if they had to do it again, um, would be the car in the background should explode as it's landing right here to make it perfect. Like it's so, it's so over the top that it's good. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was fantastic. Let's see here. Uh, also reminds me of a scene. There was a scene in one of the transporters movies where there's a bomb underneath his car. And he is, he can't get out of the car to like get it off. It's underneath this car. And so he there just happens he happens to be at a dock and there's a perfect there's like a just a, a ramp happens to be there. And in the middle of the ramp, there's a ramp, and then in the middle of the jump, there's a crane with a hook. That just happens and randomly the crane's going this way. And like I can imagine like the guy in the crane, he's like, What what, what do you need to do? He's like, Well, I just need you to move this crane back and forth. He's like, Why? Just that's what we do as longshoremen. So anyways, a transporter goes, he hits the ramp, and he's able to twist midair. And then the bomb's like right here, the hook's right here, and it perfectly knocks the bomb off. <laughs> and then he sticks the left. <laughs> it was just so over the top, it was good. <sighs> okay. Um, Sora is, okay, so this is from Bindu Ready. Sora is unlikely to be GA for six months at least and will be very nerfed in the end. I'm literally crying on behalf of the AI model. Um, uses Gen AI, okay, she's CEO of Abacus, uses Gen AI to build applied AI to LM agents and systems at scale in AWS, Google, passionate about human behavior, open source. Okay, so I, I, hey, I, if I'm coming from a Google perspective, like this would be an AI thirst trap and no one would, see, no one would ever touch this for the next 1000 years. Like that's how Google operates. Cause they're, they just like to tease people. They, they're not run by technologists anymore. They're run by legal privacy. Um, legal privacy, AI ethicist team, compliance team. Um, then you also have their lobbying wing. Cause you know, Google has multiple businesses to protect. 
and they're also trying to make sure that certain regulation doesn't happen, and so they don't want to do anything too risky because they might piss someone off or something else is in play. So better just do a marketing campaign and then, you know, do like what they did at the end of Raiders Lost Ark, and just put it in a crate and then put it away and say, our top men are working on releasing that. Uh, so from that lens, I would say correct. But from OpenAI's lens, I, I don't know where she's saying six months at least. I would say, like, like, let's look at one. I would say com- what's getting away from the releasing right away is one com- just how compute intensive it is. They did not get that in the, through the research paper. Maybe I missed it, but people in the comment section, I'd love to hear what you think on like how compute intensive it is for just to make one, uh, like a, a 10 second to a minute long video and how much that would possibly cost. Because if, from what I heard right now, Microsoft said they're, they're going to be spending $50 billion over the next couple of years on building more data centers because they need more AI compute. That's just mostly like people using chat GPT, GPT-4, and probably Dolly 2 and 3. But that does not include people having it render and create videos. Like that's another level of compute. So to her point and to her Bindu's credit, I will say she is correct in regards of like, uh, I think there are resource constraints here that are going to prevent it from getting out in the wild immediately. What they could think about doing instead is trying to figure out a niche market where people are willing to pay top dollar for this thing and give those people access. And the price kind of serves as a way for them to ration it out because now they don't have to use so much compute. I'm not suggesting they should do that. What I would love selfishly is they just roll this puppy in to my GPT, my, uh, my uh, chat GPT plus account. So every every other day I hear him Reddit, why am I paying 20 bucks a month for chat GPT plus? Me, me. This thing comes around, yeah, this is why you're paying 20 bucks a month, because you get the constantly releasing new cool shit. And I'm fine if for like three or four or five, six months, they're not releasing any shit, but then it gets me first in line for new hot shit, which is Sora. So um, I don't know if they would just nerf it out completely like she's mentioning it. Now, let's talk about nerfing it from a point of view of like deep fakes and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Uncle Sammy, Sam Altman, is looking more and more confident in who he is since the purge of the board that he wants this tech to get in people's hands because as soon as they release this stuff, they're, they're already uh, going out on Twitter and doing a campaign to hire folks for the company. So they're trying to show to AI researchers like, here's what we got. Now we're going to hire more people because we want to ship this stuff. If they go into Google mode of AI thirst trap, they lose their momentum. So she says unlikely GA for six months at least and be very nerfed in the end. I I want, I'm going to share this with her. I'd love to hear what she says about being very nerfed. Does she mean like, I mean, I think obvious nerfs are like, hey, uh, could you make a video of like Jordan Thibodeau like doing some illegal activity? Yeah, that's nerfed. Porn stuff nerfed. Smuts nerfed. Everything. Political's nerfed. But what other nerfs are you talking about? You're talking about like it's not going to be able to do minute videos, only do f- uh, five or ten second videos. Love to hear. But anyways, uh, Bindu, I think this is you have a fantastic perspective on this, and also um, Abacus AI, Gen AI to build applied AI agent and systems. Let's get you on the show, Bindu. Come speak to us. We want to hear from you. Thank you for sharing your comments. Okay. Okay, copyright infringement is not morally equivalent to theft. Um, It is, of course, bad, especially when it prevents artists from gaining the just desserts of their work. But if the artists were compensated in some other way, it wouldn't still be an infraction. Okay, so my own biased views, and I am not God on this. You all let me know in the comment section what you think. I think new ideas are like 85% of what you learned and then 15% of your own unique experiences they get married together and something opens up, which creates new create creates new ideas. And uh, I know Sarah Silverman and some other people are going after the large language models because they trained on my information and jokes and stuff. But if we were able, and it's fair, fair. She's got to get paid. She makes she has, she comedians got to get paid. We get it. But if we look at her jokes and then say, okay, Sarah, like if we had this, this magical thing that could say. Uh, that tracked, and we're not going to CCP Big Brother, but tracked everything Sarah Silverman has seen in her life and who are the most influential people in comedy that imprint on her mind, you would see, um, you would probably see Mel Brooks, you'd probably see Carlin, all the other greats who had their jokes. And she might have not, she wouldn't joke steal, but 
there were certain things she picked up from them that then made her a better comic. And then there's current comics who are learning from her style and making them better comics. Now, if we put that all out there and said start charging for all that, society would never progress because then you'd never be able to like do anything because everyone would see the sausage making process. So uh, I kind of think our society is uh, there's a quote saying um, uh, I think Edison said. Hold on, uh, Okay, give me a second here. Do 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 do. That's uh, that's uh the the freaking elevator music. Um, Edison said, "Everyone steals in commerce and industry. I've stolen a lot myself, but I know how to steal." Uh, and yes, that sounds very Machiavellian. And I know everyone's Edison looking boy. Well, hate him now. We're all Tesla, blah, but we can get in that later. But what he's also mentioned, what I infer that comment is when I do take something. I'm able to add something to it to make it even better. I go around borrowing ideas and recombine them into something better. You see this on YouTube. There's just people have different techniques of how to create a video, and then pretty soon, if it's really good, everyone kind of copies them all. Um, I just don't copy as much of it because I'm very lazy. I hate doing editing. So anyways, I kind of ramble on there. Um, I, I, I kind of side with Andrew's uh, point, but... If um, Crystal Laser is here, I'd love to hear from her point of view because I'm, I find myself of like there's a lot of people creating great content and they need to get paid, but then there's also um, creativity and sometimes for creativity you gotta learn from certain aspects of what people previously did. But if you get to the point where I need to talk to each person and be like, oh, there is something here that I learned from you here, this little microcosm, but now I can't use it unless we sign a contract and I pay you, you're gonna like destroy the whole creativity process. So I I, I feel like there's some type of give and take. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I am just a simple man of who likes AI and jokes and you should like and subscribe and share. Okay. AI wow moment ending. AI wow moment. Okay. AI wow moment ending. AI why moment beginning. I expect the market to be extremely skeptical, unimpressed, and defensive. Yes. We're going through the hype cycle um, and the journalists are going to want to push that soon. We've already gotten articles from our, our last episode. We're talking about uh, mixed reviews from Copilot. The, the the technology is there. It's proven to work. I've seen it work in the field at Salesforce. I've seen it work in research. I've seen it work for my own workflows and how I get things done. It's just now a matter of humans bullshit and our ability to give really great reasons for not for sloth, for being against it, um, for, for why we're not adopting it fully. That's the game. And that's where it takes time. And this also goes to um, during the Ilya Sussifer drama and how he kind of betrayed Sam Altman, there's a fair amount of people in the community. It's their opinion. They're like, hey, you don't need Sam Altman. You just need Ilya. It's all that matters. All matters to tech. And, and Tesla, back in the day, had the same thought. I'll just create all the ideas. And just because it's a science, there's no bullshit in life. And my ideas are going to make it to the top. Well, well, well. There's JP Morgan. There's a lot of players in the market who crushed you. And so... Part of that is he didn't have the other person, the other half of the of the puzzle, which was the person who can bring things to market, who can help with the last mile problem of, yes, you create electricity, but how do you get into someone's house? How do you deal with the politicians? How do you build the business? How do you sell it? How do you market market it? How do you operationalize it? How do you deal with people who are like doomers of electricity? Um, I look at... Um, what Sam and Greg do is like, there's like an Ilya who might create and some others who are creating. We're learning that now, like there were other people involved in GPT-4 who are now taking more prominent uh, steps in the organization. But then you have the Sams and the Gregs and the others who are helping you with that last mile of commercialization. And that's super duper important. And so right now, I think, yes, we're going through a hype cycle. I think there's a lot of money that's being invested in a lot of foundation models that are not needed. And a lot of people in Silicon Valley who wrote blank checks are going to get fucking, excuse my language, are going to get crushed hardcore because Sam keeps on driving the price of these models down cheaper and cheaper every quarter or six months, every three to six months. That being said, um, great if there is some type of consolidation, the hype cycle goes away because then we can start focusing on the real companies that are adding value. There is a lot of value being added here uh, compared to previous hype cycles. And we will go into that in a, in a second. Let's go to the next thing. 
Brad Nuremberg, you're not a Silicon Valley veteran until you've ridden a hype cycle or two. Well said, Brad, ML engineer at Planet, mentor at FDLAI, Dropbox, Google, made co-working interest in ML space. This guy's got a lot of shit in his guys. You know, a lot of stuff going on here. Nice job, Brad. Um, yes, gosh, I, how old was I? When the first dot-com bubble happened, I was 14, 15. <laughs> we had, back then, we had 56k modems. Yeah, if you want to play Unreal, you, you gotta tell your friend, okay, before I hang out with this phone, because we don't have cell phones, because most kids under 18 didn't have cell phones back then. I know, right, yeah. We'd be like, okay, we're gonna go into this server, and you're gonna join this team. All right, great, hang up. Start your 56k. Actually, first, mom, stay off the phone. Stay off the. Why are you gonna call on? Auntie's okay. You can call her later. I just need an hour to play, aka three hours. You go to Unreal and you're like clicking around. You're like looking for a game, and of course, your friend's not in the server you agreed to. So what are you gonna do? Okay, luckily you're in an apartment complex like me. You're like. Mom, don't touch the phone. Don't touch anything. I gotta go. Be right back. And I open my apartment, go down to my uncle's apartment. I'm like, can I borrow your phone, please? He's like, sure. And so he gives you the phone. And then I have to then call my friend's neighbor because his line, his line's blocked. I'm like, hey, Sue. Oh, hey, Jordan. Can you tell Carl that uh, he should be in a different server? Oh, sure. I'll get him right now. And that's, that's where things were during. The old, the olden days, kids. And then when Xbox, once I, once, uh, shout out to Michael, uh, uh, Michael and then Michael Senior's dad who helped me get a uh, broadband connection. Um, his, I, so after my mom passed, I had my grandmother who took care of me. She was born in Great Depression. Awesome. Rest in peace. But she didn't understand the concept of like broadband and why you need it. And I, if I was born back then, I wouldn't understand it either. And so a friend's dad came over and like sold her on it because she he wasn't doing well he's doing he's a good dude but also the fact that his son was bitching and moaning that i wasn't playing xbox live with him or playing games on a uh rpgs with him so dad you need to get him broadband get this poor kid broadband he's a good kid too he didn't say poor kid but anyways um so i get broadband and i was like oh my god i can like make phone calls and play video games like this is the best uh so anyways the dot-com crash happened i went through that and then I went through the financial crisis. I think right when I I was in, I got out of college um, in 2011 ish, and then got lucky and got a job at Google because I was they I got written up in the newspaper like random deranged brown person survives adversity next. And so they, someone read the story. I was like, "You want a job?" I'm like, "Where Google? Okay, it was Google McDonald's, but whatever." Um, so I went through that. And then during those hype cycles, there was. Web 2.0, which I don't think anyone knows what freaking Web 2.0 means. There was the hype cycle of social media. Everyone was, everyone was a social media entrepreneur and a social media this and that and this. Um, there's mobile, mobile, mobile. Mobile, mobile is the way. There was the VR bubble, which I still don't understand. There was, and that was started by Zuckerberg because he got his money, bought Oculus, and everyone just followed him. Um, then there was, there was crypto, just crypto, just absolute mania. Um, there's gamification. Everything had to be gamified. Gamification is the biggest thing. Zynga, all this different crap. There were scooters. <laughs> Never understood freaking scooters. Never will understand scooters like ever again. Anyone who invested in scooter deals should be banned from capitalism. Um, and then there was what was what was the last one? It's like right on top of my head right now. Uh, well, I said crypto already. There's probably something else I'm missing. Um, and AI is going to go through hype cycle. But here's the thing. Uh, I can tell people. Let's say we're playing Civilization, and for the last 20-some-odd years, you had to create like a tech tool tree. Uh, the most important tool, uh, tech technological breakthroughs for society in the last 20 years, and you only had like three or four to pick on the tree. I think for me, I would put like Internet on there. I'd put CRISPR on there. Um, and then I would put... I put uh, neural nets or large language models in there and then probably like something with like cloud technology and being able to like anyone can access servers from anywhere and, and data sets. Um, I didn't have on that list crypto. I didn't have on that list VR. 
I didn't have an LS like Web 2.0. I didn't have an LS like social media and other things like that. And I'm not saying they're whatever. What I'm saying is people think what's going on right now and here is, oh, this is just going to be like a, a Beanie Babies like gamification shit. No. This thing is, it's already adding value. It just hasn't fully gotten into large corporations because large corporations are not not uh, run well. But Brad, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. Thank you for uh, making this wonderful tweet. Uh, what a fucking week for AI. <laughs> Agreed, Matt Schumer. <laughs> It's so true. Okay. Um, Sam Lesson. Most of my actual job is copy pasting messages between email, iMessage, WhatsApp. Yes, I feel threatened by AI. <laughs> Intern of the information. Okay. So it's hilarious, but it also makes you want to cry because I'm getting PTSD of just being in a corporate and how it's just like, here's all these services that don't work together and your job now is a copy and paste and then if you miss copy and paste, you lose your fucking job and you don't matter anymore. You're dead. So I look at the large action, uh, large language models and these large action models, which Rabbit R1 talked about. We have an, we have an episode about that. Um, the fact that it can say, go fuck your API and go fuck your UI designer. We're just going to give the OS the ability of a large language model to just do all the clicking. Hell yeah. Like, I, I, this, is, this is just like the greatest thing of all time. And maybe it's just like I was HR, I was a head corporate monkey where like a lot of the work was like copy, click, paste, copy, click, paste. Like most of you engineers are like, really? People, people work that way? Like you don't like have APIs and you don't have the code and you don't use scripting? Yeah. <laughs> That's how world world works in a lot of places. We real talk. So uh Google has App Script and uh Google's internal HR systems were basically held together by App Script. And there was one point where the App Script team back in like 2014, 2015 was like, App Script, eh, it's not as important. Like, we're probably gonna deprecate it. And somehow that conversation got to this, like the, the VP of HR is like, no, 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 no. And they had like all hands to be like, this is the reason why you're getting paid right now, is because of App Script. And the engineer's like, why are you using this stuff? Like it's very decrepit and like, why don't you like code this way and that? It's like we're in HR. Like the fact that we found a couple people who can know JavaScript slash app script was like amazing, and that's how we got here. And then we begged them, like, can you like do like maybe like like no code solutions where people could just like, you know, they could just say, I want Gmail to connect to a spreadsheet and then send out these messages. You know, like maybe like have little boxes that connect. And then the engineers are like, why don't you just learn how to code? Yeah. It's like, well, the reason why we can't learn how to code is because we're focusing on getting you paid, handling all your sexual harassment lawsuits are going on right now, handling your goddamn entitlement, dealing with terminations, dealing with executive bullshit, org management, hiring people, like, we don't have time to learn to code. And so when Zapier and solutions like that came out, I was like, oh, Jesus, like someone finally gets it. So anyways, yes, uh, I hope by the end of the year, like we have more of these uh, AI agents integrated, like just doing the clicking work. And that's why I want the multi-on boys to come through and, and give a brother an account. Um, oh, there's just Will Smith again. Uh, the only way to be unimpressed with Sora's results is to be completely oblivious to the trend line that Sora lies on. So true. We talked about that before. Um, yeah. There's progress happening, and it just gets better and better and better. And I love seeing this. We're seeing it so quickly. It's not like a decades in between. We're like seeing it's sometimes months in between or half a year in between, but people can see it in real time happening. And this is fun. Now, the problem is you have folks who are um, like, oh, like if you go to Singularity Reddit, they're like, oh, the Singularity is going to happen this year. So I'm going to like stop saving all my money and quit my job. Ease up, ease up. And I would tell them um, uh, a book that they should read, uh, let's see here. True Believer, Thoughts on uh, Nature of Mass Movements. I highly suggest all of you read it. I will be including an Amazon affiliate link here so I can get my 10 cents from y'all. But this book is probably one of the best political science books ever written by a man who is a blue-collar worker. No, 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 no shade. There's more wisdom in blue-collar workers than in all PhDs. But he was like a... Oh, like a longshoreman or something. But then like 
like this is totally like uh, what was that movie, the Goodwill Hunting? <laughs> but he's like a, just a philosoph- philosophical genius, and so he wrote this book. And basically, he's a, he's a Steve Doer on the San Francisco docks. What the hell is a Steve Doer again? Let's see what this says. Steve Doer, uh, person employed contractor engaged in dock load and unload cargo cargo from ships. Okay, um, and so. He, there's a quote in here that says um, the stone the mason rejects is the cornerstone for the new world. And the thesis of this book is there are some times in society that there's people who just feel like they do not fit. Things are not working. They do not belong. And you're always going to percentage of those people. But then it might get to a point where that percentage becomes significant in size, where there's enough unrest that certain people are able to channel all that unrest and say, okay, let's go change – let's change the social order completely. And this is about how these people feel that things are so bad now, but if we make this new world – Things are going to get better, and things are going to be tolerable for us. We just need to wait for this. We just need to push this new world forward because all my problems will go away. And they're called true believers. And Singularity has a lot of true believers right now. And Sam Altman said, "What's really interesting is each time we come up with a breakthrough, like society goes up like fifteen crazy points." <laughs> and that's what you're seeing right now. Is you're seeing some people who feel. That society is completely flawed. There's a, lot, there's a lot of problems with society, but they look at singularity as salvation, and they think it's going to happen so soon, and they think it's going to fix all their problems. So you'll see people like, "Why isn't it happening today? Like, what's going on?" Blah blah. And um, it's an interesting point of view. But anyways, it's a really good book. But also, if for founders in the audience who are trying to build teams or whatnot, what I saw working in acquisitions is that. Certain founders, people, yes, people were working there to get paid. You have bills to pay, and you hopefully make some money. But also, the founder had this uh, charisma um, and had a vision that people felt like I'm working for not just working for the paycheck, I'm working for something more. And I didn't see that. In, well, I saw it in the acquisitions, but I never worked under a founder like that until, well, when I was working under well, Larry, didn't know me, but like when I was in the hierarchy seeing Larry and his vision about like how you want to make the world better. And I experienced the vision because I was poor, but Google allowed me to get free resources through a search engine that made my life better. So I realized the vision. Um, and uh, when I, funny thing is when Google got bigger, we never focused on like, you know, we want to be the best at this and dominate this and that. We constantly had to take um, anti-monopoly courses. And it literally the courses were like, uh, should you say you want to crush the competition or should you say you want a viable market with lots of entrants that make sure everyone can have a seat at the table? And of course, it was never crush the competition. It was a ladder. So it was basically like beta trading. Um, yet you get paid based upon crushing the competition. Like sales doesn't get paid from like losing a deal. They get paid from crushing the competition and closing a deal. Um, and so when I went to Slack, uh, during my first week, there was some like all hands meeting. And the VP of marketing was like, we are here to crush Microsoft. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and we're here to crush them because we have a superior product. We believe in what we're doing. We had joy in people's lives. And they are like a soulless organization that destroys small companies. And like he was like he, – he was going at it. And all the people were like, hell yeah, let's go. And it was – it was like there was some charisma in regards to not just crushing Microsoft, but like we were on a mission to make work better, pleasant, um, and allow people to get their best work done. And it was like a vision you felt and you like believed in it. And I was like, oh, wow, like here I am, a soulless M&A jockey who's done 150 deals, who has like a no heart. And now like the Grinch's heart is growing. I'm feeling something. So this book, True Believer, kind of gets into that. Um, sermon over. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, forgot to mention, we're doing a membership drive. Our goal is to have 100 paid members by the end of this month. We are halfway there. We're 56. We have two weeks to achieve this. I think we can get there. Um, so go to patreon.com forward slash SVIC. And for five bucks a month, you get access to our exclusive videos that are ad free. We produce three of them per week. Um, also, you get the ability to see our reading list, which is, which is fantastic. So head to patreon.com forward slash SVIC. Thank you. Okay, next one. 
the end of YouTube and TikTok is nigh, uh, says uh, Ate Pi, because it says David Schur for OpenAI says, we are hiring folks to have experience with large scale video infrastructure, serving processes, ingest, et cetera. If you think you'd be good match, please reach out. Okay, so fair point. Fair point what this person is saying. I think directionally in the future, they are correct. But as far as like today and right now in the situations we're doing, there's a lot of steps to get to that point. And you're probably like, well, Jordan, you're on YouTube, you're biased. Yeah, I'm biased. But I think what's going to happen too is you you already saw on YouTube some people have created their own AI channels, all AI generated, and there was all the hype. But then it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is put together by generated by AI. There's nothing natural here. They're not even writing scripts. It feels fake. Now, let's go to the next step. Okay, now it's all natural. You can't tell it's generated by AI. But again, the person putting it together maybe has no differentiating view, doesn't have any quirk, doesn't have unique insights. Um, and so I think th at that point, you're going to still run into the same situation. Of now it's more of, okay, maybe Sir Joe is not behind the mic or I'm not behind the mic, but the channel is curating certain types of content that you find interesting. So maybe it allows the creators to up their game now and produce even more content, but not get locked into the hell of editing shit and whatnot. So uh, interesting point. I'd love to hear what uh, Ate Pai means. Like he's mean like the, 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 the short form TikTok, YouTube short bullshit, like one minute clips. Like, yeah, that's, there's going to be a lot more competition now for that. And it's going to be eaten. But as far as like long form dialogue, discourse, interesting guests, unique point of views, unless someone gets an LLM that's specifically trained to have a certain point of view and to push guests in certain directions, which might be interesting, probably could happen. I don't know necessarily as YouTube and TikTok is nigh. Um, and who's at risk? I think probably think TikTok more the short form side because they're now going into more long form videos. But I have a friend working there. They're like, they seem to be doing pretty well. Um, excuse me. Okay, now we're going to OpenAI Sora text video AI model. This is a video I did recently. I want to uh, call it some good um, comment. All the comments are good. Actually, well, 99% of the comments are good. You people are super nice. You're friendly. You you don't get into huge spats with people. If you do debate people, you don't go into ad hominems. And that's what I want. I want people to feel welcomed in the community. Um, and you see me sometimes go hard on people. And I go hard on people when they're fucking douchebags. Like when they try to be an asshole, I'm like, hey, go unsub. Don't have to fucking be here because I ain't, I'm i doing this shit for free right now and I don't need to pull up your fucking shit. Or people who disagree with us, but are they do it like adults and are nice. We appreciate you. So keep commenting. And people who do agree with us keep commenting too. So uh, DC Cinzi. As a cinematographer and filmmaker, I do not understand how people in the field are not super excited about all this. Agreed. I could not sleep all night after watching these samples. Um, we're at the point where if you have something to say, the technical aspect is not a limitation any longer. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, a Gutenberg press moment. Finally, the industry will have to step it up and stop hiding behind the cold technique. Amazing. You're going to get a thumbs up, and that is a uh, high FTA comment. Feel the AGI comment. Inside joke. So, uh Ilya uh, Susserberg would literally go to people who were interviewing at OpenAI, and their first question, he would say, do you feel the AGI? And these engineers would be like, no. Uh, can we end this conversation? So it's kind of like, hmm. And he also would build effigies of like little some wooden statues be like, this is unaligned AGI. We need to crush it. And he like burns it and stuff. People are like, uh, you been on that fentanyl? You been on that wacky debacky? Um, so we say feel the AGI is like an inside joke. When someone says high FTA or high FTA energy or whatnot, that means you're means you're doing something positive. Okay. Quite seriously now, I'm getting a bit nervous. This is from Coldy, Gemini 1.5, Sora, Apple Vision Pro, and probably several other new systems all arriving so rapidly. Fast forward two years and the abilities of AI will even be more astounding. Agreed. Um I'm probably not getting nervous because maybe there's a mental defect I have, but you're probably, if you're nervous, there's probably a warranted opinion. 
I, I appreciate you. You're one of our best, you're one of our core community members. Um, the pace of AI progress and that convergence is going to lead to serendipitous synergies, which will drastically change the world real soon now. Super interesting. Uh, I think em- entertainment, gaming, definitely. We even saw people who are doing AI fake calls of Biden's voice. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. The political season is going to be a lot of, it's going to be very interesting. And also another take on this. Um, if they release this model without it being aligned and it could do political things like it, open AI is going to get so much, is going to get so much flack. And let's say Donald Trump wins they're immediately Democrats are just going to point the finger and be like, it's all open AI's fault. It's the AI that caused all this shit. Just like they went on social media last time. And, and if Republicans lost, they probably like, it's the AI's fault. Me. Also not a political show. So, Sam's in a real interesting spot right now about what he's going to release this thing, and he's very hope to God is properly aligned, and he will do it. But then there's probably going to be someone who creates an open source model like this, because um, there's you know there's a lot of great ways to do government propaganda on it. Um, there are people talking about watermarking and things like that. But then of course you put a watermark on it, someone's going to create a new software that can pull the watermark off. So it'll be interesting. I don't want to be over dramatic, but I believe that today. 15th February 2024 could be regarded as day zero in the coming wave of AI progress. This weekend, you will find me in a darkened room with an ice pack in my head as I consider what the world will look like 10 years time. First of all, we need you in this channel, so you take care of yourself, Coldy. You're very important to us. What? This could be the moment. I thought when ChatGPT happened, I wasn't thinking AGI or anything, but I, when I first played with ChatGPT, I felt like I, I felt like this was, I don't know, it was almost like I was seeing a new revolution happen in front of me. Like it was like a new industrial revolution. Like this is something different. This is a computer that could talk to me and understand unstructured data. This is something magical here. Um, uh, Sora, I think it's super magical too. I think it's super awesome. So um, feel the AGI. Don't hurt yourself, please. Um, Let's see. Okay. I am impressed by the advancement in temporal continuity, but I have three issues with the first iteration. Text, text remains a problem. I don't think it's coincidence that the first scene is set in Tokyo and not in New York, where the signs would be in English. Oh, good point. Human realism. Well, the facial features are great. There's no facial movement. Additionally, when there is movement such as the cat in bed, it becomes obvious that's AI generated. Any hand movement also exhibits a, f- a familiar AI glitch. Media translation, there's no image to image or video view transition to see how it combines different modes. Okay, so... To be fair to him, I think this comment was made before the research was released that shows the video to video transition and see how it combines different modes. But uh, good points. Um, I think the points in regard to text and the facial issue glitches are true. Um, but I, the path of progress, like it seems like it's something that they're going to work out as time goes on. So fantastic. Um, Last thing, uh, we have the Sick Podcast LinkedIn page. If you can't, head over to it. Um, it's got me jokingly with like, uh, what is that, aluminum on my head or something. Go over to Sick Podcast, like it, follow, like and subscribe and share all of our stuff. If you can, make sure to go to Twitter too, Sick Podcast, like, subscribe, and share. And go to patreon.com forward slash Sick. Your contributions mean a lot. It allows us to put out great uh, content. We are all in on this show now because I'm putting full time effort. That's why you've gotten what five or six videos from me this week. Like Jesus. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash sick. Thanks for being amazing. Have a great weekend. Have a great three day weekend. I'll talk to you a little later. Bye.